Welcome everyone to Limitless Potential Technologies. And today we're gonna to be doing a lot more building, hands-on, running the machines than we are talking. So we've got a chrome ray converter here. This is the second generation chrome ray converter. And you can see it's got four stacks of magnets. It's wound with a 23 gauge mag wire, tri-folder wound. So three strands of mag wire twisted together and wrapped around the coils in series. And then those are attached to the commutators or the slip rings, which allow these brushes to take the electrical energy off and run up to our bridge rectifier here. So we've got a DC output from the AC input. And as far as the loads today, we've got, these are 12 watt LEDs. So 12 one watt LEDs in each one of these arrays. I've got two here, so this is a 24 watt load. We've got a single 12 watt load here. And if we get the 24 watt load going, then we'll solder up the third one on there and make it a 36 watt load and see what happens. So I know you guys have been waiting for this and wanting this. I have too. I've just been scared to run this thing because it took me like 200 hours to build and it could blow up in a matter of seconds. So if it does, it's in the name of science and I hope you guys appreciate it. Without further ado, let's spool this thing up. I've got a tachometer here, a tachometer. We'll show you the RPM that it's running at. I've got the power supply over here. So we're gonna turn on the power supply and I'll read out what the power supply is saying so you can see rough wattage. And again, this is just rough calculations here. Let's just see what we can power. And I'm going to get, so all we have to do is connect the one alligator clip when it's running and we should be good to go. Okay, so we've got, we'll start with 24. 24 watts of load, and we gotta give the machine a little kick to get us. So right now we're operating at, oh, let's say 18 watts. It does power the load. It's got an intermittent flash to it, and it does bog it down, but I would expect that because we're at slow, low RPM right now. So let's see what happens if we crank it up. So it's gone up, it put the load on there and it increased the amperage, so we're up to about 20, 26 watts or so, and we got a 24 watt load that's flashing intermediately. Let's crank it up and see what we can do. We're still at about 13, we're at 1500 RPM, and we're pushing up to 2.7 amps and 13 volts. So you know, we're at like 36 watts or so, but we are powering a 24 watt load. Now, it's just with the frame rate on this GoPro camera, but those are lit on full, those are bright. So that's 24 watts coming off there. And we're at almost 50 watts of input power. So I say we hook up some more load and see where we can take it. Okay, so I'm gonna quickly solder up to 30. We'll go up to 36 watts here and see what we can do. Okay, so we've got 36 watts now of light bulbs here. And I'll also show you guys the voltage on the voltmeter. I don't want to spool it up too fast because the thing, the part that's half the problem is we can't go up to as high of RPM as we'd like. We don't want to blow the damn thing up. So we're at 1200 RPM, 1600 RPM, and it definitely bogs out and increases the amperage when we light up the load. So now we're at roughly 42 watts of input power and we're powering a 36 watt load. It's 45 watts of input power and a 36 watt load. Okay, we're gonna take the load off. 1800 RPM. I'm just gonna stop it for a second. Something flew off at one point. And I feel like we need to build another one here. Just, I know how to build them so that they're much sturdier and we don't have to worry about stuff falling apart. But yeah, I wanna spool it up to over 3000 RPM and I got a feeling this one's gonna blow apart if I do. We're getting up closer to 2000 RPM and I already had bits and pieces flying off. I think it's most likely this outer coil here that, yeah, I might as well just stop while I'm ahead. I hope you guys appreciate that though. We did put a load on it and it does produce a large amount of electricity. I'm not gonna say it's over unity at this point because it looks like it's about 75% efficient. Maybe we could have put um, more loads on it and had it keep going, but we will leave that one there for now. Okay, so this one here is the very first one that I built. It's only two pole 
and it's got 28 gauge wire on it, but it puts off much higher voltages. I took a shock from this one one time and it just about killed me. So you gotta be careful with these. This one puts off over hundred volts. I actually think the higher voltage, the smaller wire, higher voltages is the way we need to go with these. So let's fire up this one, see what kind of loads we can power with it. Hopefully this one doesn't blow apart either. Now, this one did seem to have the correct waveform. one's at about 40 watts and we're spinning 2200 rpm so this one i can probably take up to uh, that's 46 watts 2500 rpm okay and see that one doesn't really that doesn't slow down when i put the load on it it's powering a 36 watt load and there's no slowing down or bogging out on this crom rate so if we take our voltmeter, I don't want to get shocked here, putting off roughly 300. roughly 2500 rpm at least according to this thing i don't know if this it might only be half that but either way this one doesn't slow down when you short it out so that's a direct short it slows down slightly but it also decreases the and you can see the volt that spark there is intense i want to show you the spark coming off there because it's fierce no wonder it almost killed me it's like deadly Okay, so that's roughly 50 watts. This one has the correct waveform too from the Cromway when I use the oscilloscope on it. It does have the correct waveform and it's getting closer. I think we just need to spin it up faster and increase the voltages and then it won't bog down because it barely does, when we put the load on there, it didn't bog down the same as the other one. And even direct shorting it, it's not bogging down like the other one. Slowed down a little bit, but there's been other times where it does seem to just stay the same or speed up, so. I'd say this is more on the right track. I'm leaning towards basically the smaller gauge wire and probably sticking with two poles for now, but this Cromery seems to be closer to what we want. And I think we could build a better version pretty easily that's more robust and easier to try out a few more things. I think we're close though. I do think these are going the right direction and it'd be interesting to hook them up to lead acid batteries to recharge and see how much charge they put in them. Like in my line of thinking is it's the same with the pulse motors, higher voltages, bigger impulse functions for the spikes of voltage in there is gonna get you more of the radiant energy back flow what you want. Let me know what you guys think. I hope you appreciate it. Let's build some more Cromrays and Bendini pulse motors here together. I'm gonna start the crowdfunding. That's basically where I'm at right now is that I need to crowdfund. I need about $20,000 Canadian, $30,000 Canadian to build a proper pulse motor generator based on the Bendini. And then a few thousand dollars, we could upgrade the Cromrays and try a few more things. The pulse motor, I'm more certain of going over Unity with the Cromrays. We're on the right track and it's interesting. Definitely worth uh, pursuing both of them. So thank you very much. Like and subscribe. I love you all. Look forward to the future and I'm going to put out lots more videos on organic horticulture and free energy devices for you. So please like, subscribe, share. Thank you. Bye.